Hello, this is a quick video uh, because I have many parents who have asked me uh, well, how do I set up the toys at home since they come to my playgroup, they've seen uh, many toys, they've seen their children being engaged with the toys and activities I provide for them, but they cannot quite figure out how to um, reproduce and replicate what they uh, do in the playgroup at home and uh, with what they have. Um, obviously my own children are five tomorrow and nine, so uh, I didn't want to show you their own activities because basically it's not really relevant for the um, children who comes to my own playgroup. So uh, I kind of replicate what I used to have uh, when my son was younger and it was until very recently that we changed the layout and mainly because we have a puppy so we cannot really keep those toys that way downstairs anymore so we're changing the layout so while we still have these kind of uh, shelves I am wanted to show you and use this video and keep this video for later and as an example of how to display your toys and uh, purposely today I didn't put anything uh, that is specifically um, sold as a Montessori activity because, you know, your child is probably on the tree, um, most of the well-known activities Montessori activities are for children of a tree and um, they're not very relevant for your family life and uh, for family setting. Even if you're homeschool, uh, I think if your child is under four, um, many of the labeled Montessori toys or Montessori material uh, are not that necessary and my observations in my playgroup show me that most children play with um, toys and uh, practical life activities and uh, what is more important is the way you set up those activities. It's a bit different than just buying a toy and putting it on the shelf. So that's what I wanted to show you today. So I'm going to uh, swap, turn around and show you, all right? And if you hear my puppy, it's because she's outside and I don't take her inside when I'm recording this one because uh, she was into every little toy and ready to bite and uh, eat them. So it's safer if she's outside. So this is, you know, something that many families have. Uh, IKEA shelf, this IKEA unit. Um, obviously you do not need any kind of specific unit and you have to work with what you have. So it could be a coffee table, a bookshelf that you already have that your child can access easily and it can be just little mats with one activity and for ch one child at home I would say that it's plenty enough and I have added uh, here a treasure basket and an extra toy that doesn't fit uh, on this kind of shelf and that's in my opinion all you need for a young child and you rotate and then you add on that any activities that you may carry on with him or with her in the kitchen and any activities, any kind of craft activities that may require a bit of supervision. I have a craft area, I always add a craft area in addition of that. Anyway, so I'm going to show you every activity and they are most of the favorite activities in the playgroup. So we have this bad runner and yeah children can be focused on that for a very long time that comes normally with four balls but i realize that you know just one ball is plenty enough fun and sometimes i put two but uh, over the years we add that uh, when my daughter was one year old for her birthday she received this one and we lost some of the balls so uh, i managed to get um, some balls back from other toys and uh, yeah, one at a time is plenty enough if your child is very young. Then you can see that everything is presented into a tray or into a basket. And there is just one uh, activity or toys on each shelf that helps the child to bring back the activity back to the shelf. Obviously, if your child is very young, it's probably that he's going to take the activity and you're going to put it back on the shelf. But it's fine as long as you role model and uh, you don't expect your child to be uh, able to tidy up um, when it's not quite there yet. Also, it doesn't really matter if you have language, maths, numbers, colors, all of that uh, mixed up on the same shelf. Because I think when you are at home, obviously, um, you're not going to have enough space to have, a, like in a monster school, you will have sensorial shelf and you will have a fine motor skill shelf, practical life shelf, you will have a language shelf, but in your home, that probably is the kind of space you have, uh, so not such a big space, so as long as you have enough activities that your child enjoy and you rotate them every now and then, that's plenty enough. 
So let's see what we have. So this is a um, torch that you activate that way. Blocks, so I would always have some open-ended activities, some building activities, so wooden blocks, uh, duplos, anything uh, like that. I, uh, this one is one of my son's favorite. It's no, no, if I even still like this kind of building block. And uh, always one jigsaw if your child likes jigsaw. Uh, this is a six-piece jigsaw. And just to show you, it's uh, just a, you know, um, the box from uh, my tablet. And I kept it. And it's just to show you that you do not have to have this kind of cute basket. If you don't have the budget, keep any kind of containers as long as it's not um, distracting because it may be with a lot of print on it, uh, then it's fine. I used to keep uh, the mushrooms container and I add only that before I add the budget for this basket. Now it's something else that I wanted to show you. This one, it's a toy that I bought and it comes that way so it's like a jigsaw and each has some pieces to um, stack on so you have to kind of twist and screw to twist the piece so the four piece together can be a bit overwhelming so what I liked with this one and why I bought it it's because you can have one piece at a time and also the way you can present it you can have the two pieces in a basket here and just the big piece here and the new child can will know that he has to put this piece on that okay so that's a way to present it uh, more in line with the monastery ideas with the monastery and uh, it's not overwhelming so like, like that no you can rotate when you see that your child is well able to do this one you take one that's more uh, advanced more twisting on this one and, and another and then you can rotate like you can four different activities and then you can do two together then when your child is very much um, able to master these activities you put the four pieces together a lot of language activities uh, for a child who has just started to talk it's very very good um, anything that is passionate about, like if your child is passionate about animals, that would be animals in this basket. If your child is passionate about uh, musical instruments, that could be a music instrument. Um, if you can provide a real object, it's even better. And what you can do is to match object to picture. And you can not have the word for the toddlers. Obviously, I have these cards for different age groups, so it was easier for me to have the one with the letters, the words written on it, and that's just a matching activity. So from a very concrete stage, when they manipulate the object to a more abstract uh, concept, when it's a picture. Um, um, another firm favorite in the playgroup is this green rainbow. You can do so much with that, and my children were no five, five tomorrow. I will repeat that during the whole video. And nine, I uh, still like to play with this one and you can be very creative. I, um, yeah, and it's also very attractive. So those kind of toys are, you know, children are very attractive to it. Um, here, we have a latch board. It's also a brand that many parents like to buy. It's called Melissa and Do. Yeah, I like it, but obviously it's kind of, you know, uh, help you try to master some skills. But also you have to be careful with these kind of toys because that can also be very overwhelming. And in the playgroup I also have an uh, individual uh, square with one latch on each that are just the latch and that are less overwhelming. And this one sometimes can be very distracting and the children don't pay attention to the latch but they want just to see the animals inside. Uh, they get frustrated because they cannot master all the latches. So just be aware of that and it really depends on your child um, then for some of them that will be a uh, zone sort of stimulation and some of them it will be already too much and some stuff 
that you can do very easily. So it's just a little chest of drawers for children. And I present it that way with a drawer outside the chest and I have to put back the drawer. And it's come from charity shop. I think I still have the price on it. Oh no, I don't. So it's something that you can have, you know, for one or two pounds compared to the price of a toy. It's very uh, good value because um, you can also hide a little surprise in each and that could be, you know, like a little animals and that become a language activity. Uh, yeah, you can maybe match some um, uh, moon, stars and sun and have something similar inside. It could be less overwhelming if I, at time I would paint it and make it maybe like three primary colors and uh, sorting colors activities. That can be a project, um, but this kind of activity has always been very successful with my own children and in the playgroup. I always add this kind of activities. Uh, a few more traits I can show you. Obviously, I would rotate this. Uh, so if I see that my children don't play with these activities anymore, I would rotate some of them. You can see which ones they take all the time. So any kind of intriguing boxes and um, containers, bottle and lid. Always interesting to add that. Uh, same with this one, it's different kind of purse, with different kind of opening, with button, zip, and, um, you know, fastener, so different kind of purses to open and close. Same, it's another language activity, but I really love this kind of language activities with animals, um, with children on the tree, that's the best way to teach them new vocabulary. Uh, I have the books here, I didn't change the books, that's the books at my own children have at the moment here downstairs but yeah I would have a few toddler books here if it was for toddlers and uh, last thing I can show you is oh yeah I still have this one this one is really the most successful activity in the playgroup I think uh, all children have tried these activities and tried to master it and at first it's just they transfer the bee by hand they don't match it at the beginning, but they like to transfer them and they're very, you know, very attractive. And then they use a tweezer and then they can match the colors. So it's very an attractive toy and um, yeah. But you do not have to have those kind of toys. Uh, you know, these ones are plastic, uh, you know, it's a simple jigsaw, it's a simple uh, cardboard box, uh, wooden blocks, Legos, Duplos, whatever works for you children, whatever works with what you have, it's more about the presentation, having not too many toys out at the same time, that's enough. And with this kind, obviously, of um, uh, furniture, you can store the rest of the toy somewhere else and your child should play longer with that. And if you provide a little mat, I didn't take the mat out of my um, car boot, <laughs> I just back for the playgroup. Uh, but yeah, you can have a mat and try to show them to walk on a specific space. Uh, yeah, that's a good idea too. And here it's a treasure basket, so really depends on your child's age. Uh, if your child is just a baby, you have different kind of uh, texture in it. Uh, an interesting thing to explore. Generally, when they are under one, they will explore uh, with their hands and with their mouth. So just you have to think about think about safety. And when your child is young, older, they try to, they start to explore this kind of open-ended object that could be anything, um, just trying try an error and trying things. So here, yeah, that's mainly what they do with that. They find the missing circles and bracelets and um, that's a napkin holder and uh, napkin holders as well. Um, could be uh, curtain rings and a lot of bangles of different kinds and yeah, uh, always have a treasure basket and the treasure basket kind of um, evolve into something that's more, you know, open-ended exploration with um, kind of look-alike material, like you could have a lot of scarves, a uh, lot of containers and things to put in the containers, musical instruments basket to explore, uh, dress up uh, costume to explore and always have kind of basket like that. Yeah, so that's it for today and uh, thank you for watching I'm coming back to say goodbye okay so this is what it look like and um, yeah if you have any questions after this about uh, what to put on new toy shelves at home let me know you can post your comment here and I will read them later thank you bye